It remains far from certain who the next House Speaker will be after the Majority Leader Steve Scalise dropped out of the race yesterday. The Louisiana Congressman made the surprise announcement to reporters last night, only one day after winning House Republicans' nomination for the role. Ashley Etienne and Leslie Sanchez join us now to discuss this further. Ashley is a CBS News political contributor and former communications director for Vice President Kamala Harris and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Leslie is a CBS News political analyst. Uh, Leslie, um, to you first, w w why is it so hard, given what's happening in the world right now, where uh, the United States is expected to be a strong voice, a leader in many of the conflicts that are occurring, not just in Israel, but around the world, and Republicans cannot find common ground on simply electing a leader? You know, it's, it's an interesting point, Vlad, and it's a disappointing point, I would say, for many Republicans to see that they have not coalesced yet. Um, and Steve Calise, Scalise, uh, who, who bowed out of this race, uh, did have the opportunity to come ahead as Speaker, but there are a disgruntled few, the very loud populist voices we hear about, who are continuing to create a tremendous amount of friction among the conference, and they couldn't have agreement. So seeding the doubt, uh, seeding those uh, seeds of doubt against Scalise, and then you had some mem some members who really had a lot of. Uh, disappointment in early on in his ability to reach out across the aisle to every single member. So I think the expectations are unrealistic for some of the conference. Um, but I slowly believe they are getting to a new speaker, and it should come uh, rather soon based on, on my sources. Um, you, you know, Ashley, I don't think anybody really benefits from this, right? Because it just it, Congress looks like it's a mess. But, uh, you know, I'll ask you if, if there's anything that, that Democrats can are, is, are taking from watching this? No, I think you're absolutely right. It, it is, doesn't look like a mess because it's a it is a mess. It's a complete mess. And you know, I agree with um, with Congressman Scalise when he made the point that what we're facing right now in this moment that we're in right now is bigger than the Republican Party. It's bigger than one individual. This is about the security of our nation. It's about supporting our allies in Israel and Ukraine. It, it is about funding our government. So that's really what's at stake here. And you're absolutely right. This is why the American people don't don't want to engage in politics. Me too. I mean, I want to exit stage left because it's it's just a complete mess and it's not I'm not sure how we get out of it. I can just I would just advise the Republican Party. It's something that I saw working for Speaker Pelosi, which is they have to figure out to Leslie's point how to contain this small minority of members that's really holding all of government hostage right now. And the way to do that, that she used to do it, I saw done, which is to elevate those moderate members and have those moderate members come into the caucus, into the conference room and make the case that what's at stake is not just the safety of our nation, health and security of our nation and our allies, but also their majority. They've got to get back focused on keeping and maintaining the majority. Uh, Leslie, um, the uh, Minister of Communication for Israel recently condemned uh, former President Donald Trump's uh, recent remarks about uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, the terror group Hezbollah. Essentially, he called them shameful. Uh, in, I'm going to read his words uh, that a man, shameful that a man like that, a former U.S. president, abets propaganda and disseminates things that would wound the spirit of Israel's fighters and its citizens. Uh, that was according to the AP. He's talking about the comments that former President Trump made, I guess, at a rally um, where he uh, criticized Bibi and uh, talked about Hamas. Um, as as um, in in words that are he said something like they're smart or that, something they're along smart. those lines yeah, yeah that right. they're smart um, um, uh, Leslie would probably remember yeah so Leslie I, my question is um, you know at this point with both Republicans and Democrats united for the most part um, in President Biden's unequivocal support of the state of Israel where you both know as well as I do that in past Bibi has had problems with U.S. presidents uh, and that there has been tension even with President Biden before uh, this uh, act of barbarism and terrorism occurred last week. Uh, but now you've seen Pre Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, uh, praising President Biden for his strong stance. Um, what do you make of former President Trump's comments um, at this very delicate moment that we're in in history? I think, Vlad, we've gone around this merry-go-round like for the last several years in terms of inexcusable statements by Donald Trump. I don't want to be here again on this platform uh, trying to defend uh, something that's just ludicrous, especially in the state of this. Mm -hmm. Let's give props where props are due. President Biden gave a very strong uh, defense of Israel 
And that is where the unanimity uh, and people coming together, uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, in that stance. And I think anything that takes away from that, you can look at it as Donald Trump a misstep, not mm -hmm. understanding the geopolitical situation. There are numerous things, or just his own bravado mm -hmm. uh, in, in saying that. Uh, but I do want to point out to, to other Republican uh, voices. You have Nikki Haley, uh, mm -hmm. who's been giving a very strong stance, and a, and a, a larger context. And I think some other Republican contenders miss, had some missteps. They just didn't fully understand mm -hmm. or grasp the history here. Uh, so I think there's a, a, a desire right now for that leadership. And I would say Ashley spoke to it a little bit, not only on the on the presidential stage, the executive office, but certainly the legislative stage. Mm -hmm. And this is where the leaders will, their voices will rise and, and that strength will rise. And that's, I think, what, what people are looking for. Excellent point, Leslie. Ashley, I should ask you about Democrats and their response to what's happening um, in Israel um, between Hamas and Israel. There have been some Democrats that have been criticized for their perhaps tepid uh, approach. Uh, are Democrats on the same page? No, I think Democrats are on the same page, standing firmly and uh, behind the president who said that we stand with Israel and that we're going to commit as many resources as we can to actually helping de defend Israel. So, yeah, I don't I don't anticipate that um, you'll see any factions that break off within the Democratic Party. You know, Mr. Um, Jeffries has also said that he stands ready to really prepare, prepare, well, not prepare, but provide, I should say, votes to the Republican conference if they needed not only just to elect a speaker, but also to fund and provide resources for Israel. So, uh, you know, so the Democratic Party stands firmly behind the president and firmly behind Israel. All right. Uh, Leslie, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you, ladies.